Global Mail National Affairs columnist Jeffrey Simpson started his news career at City Hall in Toronto in 1977. In 84, he started writing his newspaper column, and when not doing that, he writes award-winning books, and the new one is called Chronic Condition. Uh, and, and as you were saying uh, before the break, what were we talking about? I think we were talking about wait times and how to deal with the wait times, and I was saying that they were among the uh, highest in the world and that we mm -hmm. had to kind of break out the ideology as to how to deal with them because if we just keep trying to add more money into the existing system, um, we're only going to make modest and marginal improvements, and I'm in favor of dehospitalizing a lot of things. Value for money, always a good thing. Uh, Britain, Australia. They spend less of their GNP on health care and they get better results less and get better results. What really stops it here? Who well, stops I, I, it? I think, I think what happens here is, first of all, we pay, and this is not the core of the problem, we pay our providers uh, very close to the top in terms of wages in the kind, so that adds quite a cost. Secondly, we've got the single dumbest, and I use that word very advisedly, system for purchasing drugs in this country. Mm. <coughs> Every province has its own formulary. Every province sends its own negotiators out there on behalf of four and a half million British Columbians, 950,000 Nova Scotians, instead of having one buyer for 34 million people, which would get lower prices. Uh, so we have a ho very expensive drugs in this country. That pushes up the cost. We have these hospitals that I say are stuffed to the gills and too much is being done there. You were making a point off air. Hospitals are designed and they're wonderfully good at very acute problems. Okay? Mm -hmm. You present with an aneurysm or a heart attack mm -hmm. or you need uh, something done quickly that's serious and life-threatening, they're really good. The further down the chain you get, the less acute your problem, the more it's optional, the more it's discretionary, then you get plagued by these significant mm -hmm. uh, wait times. So life death, we're good at. You have a heart attack, I have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. We're in there tomorrow. I'm sorry, not tomorrow. We're in there right away, and tomorrow <laughs> we're, in, we're fixed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you need a knee replacement or you need to see specialists for consultation because you have an ongoing chronic condition or a disease, then you're going to wait. And what would you do about the mentally ill, people with addictions? You, you know something? I, I, I would only say this. There are, I could critique my own book pretty easily. I don't say much about mental health in there. I don't mm -hmm. say anything about Aboriginal health. Uh, there's lots of issues in this whole healthcare field and I tried to limit it. The mm -hmm. only thing I'd say about mental health is the biggest, if I had a dollar and you said, what are you gonna spend it on healthcare? I wouldn't put it in the system. I would try to deal with poverty or I would try to deal with people who have really acute problems that cause them to be presenting to the healthcare system more often. Mm. One of the reasons why Sweden has such a lower, there are many, a lower cost of their healthcare system is they have a more egalitarian society. They have fewer poor people. Anybody who studied this knows that the, poor, the more poor people you have, the more drain it's going to be on the system. And there are specialized groups within the broadly defined poor area, mm -hmm. poor, poor element of the population right. of whom the mentally challenged and afflicted are evident who disproportionately put costs on the healthcare system. So attacking severe mental health problems, homelessness and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, which are often people who have mental uh, difficulties, uh, would be a high priority if you were interested in bending the cost curve long term. Sure. Uh, two-tier system. I, Stockwell Day was carrying the placard, uh, no, no two-tier system and you say and many say we already have it. No, uh, again, go back to the distinction. Two-tier means that you should be able to pay for medical services out of your own pocket provided by some institution. P private payment within the public system is totally different. And we, unfortunately, uh, have mixed up what private means. You know the Canada Health Act, that mm -hmm. iconic thing? Yes. Well, it speaks well, about I don't know it public. Well, I actually do, if I may yes, say so. Yes, I sure you um, do. It speaks about public administration. It says the system shall be publicly administered. It does not say who's delivering the service. It says that the state has to administer it mm. on a nonprofit basis. And who's accountable? The state is accountable. A little birdie who actually draft helped draft the act gave me what's called the interpretive manual, which is what civil servants put together after the act was passed explaining what each clause meant. And when they came to the public administration clause, and I quote them in there, it specifically says, this clause does not prevent 
for-profit delivery of medicine under mm -hmm. a public administered system. It couldn't be clearer, but we think the Canada Health Act prevents that. And we hear the rich and the poor, and there'll be a system for the rich, and uh, wasn't it Jean Chrétien who said, if you go to the United States, they check your wallet before your pulse? Yeah, great line. <laughs> Look, I don't want the U.S. The U.S. spends 17.6% of its total national wealth, GDP, on health care, mm -hmm. private and public. We spend 117 so they spend 50% more of their national wealth on health than we do, and they don't get 50% better aggregate health care outcomes. If you're well insured in the United States and you've got a really good insurance plan, you're going to get top class medicine, no mm -hmm. question about mm -hmm. it. The problem becomes more difficult when you have less money, so there's where you get the two tier. And as you point out and have many times, uh, one thing Canadians will always tell you is, well, we're not like them yeah, no, but because that, we have health care. <laughs> but that so obscures this adult conversation. I don't know how many times I heard Roy Romano make this comparison. Mm -hmm. If you read some of the academics who write about health care defending our system to the nth degree, they're always making that comparison. And I'm saying, this is an apple called the public system here. That's an orange called the private system over there. Stop it. Compare this system with the other largely public systems and you will find that unfortunately in many of these surveys we don't do too well. I don't take any pleasure in saying that. So put on your other hat, uh, uh, recent columns, hockey, hockey strike, are they coming back? What do you think? No, I don't know. I'm not anytime soon, I wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. uh, Afghanistan, out of there, anything to say? Justin Trudeau. Well, Justin Trudeau, actually, free, free confession, I actually don't know Justin Trudeau. I've seen him at a distance. I've never spent time with him. If his name was Justin Turner or Justin Smith, we wouldn't be talking about him the way we're talking about him. So, no, I heard him he, speak the other night, and what was interesting about the room, uh, the elders who liked Pierre Elliott were there, and all the young ones were there. Mm, it suggested he's going to announce in Papineau on Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he's going to. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, look, all one can say is that he has lots to prove. I mean, Bob Ray, if he decided to run for the leadership, wouldn't have anything to prove. He's been in public life for a long time. He's a known quantity. Mm -hmm. We know he's very talented, et cetera, et cetera. With Justin Trudeau, we don't really know the cut of his jib, except he's his father's son. We know, to his credit, he won a difficult seat in Montreal. We know that among liberals, there's a buzz, that he's the biggest fundraiser they've got. And now we'll see. Like, what does he stand for? Uh, can he stand up to the conservative attack machine, which, as we've seen, is vicious and relentless? Mm -hmm. uh, is he dexterous on his feet? We know he's perfectly bilingual. That's a help. But, you know, we'll see. I, I really can't say more than we'll mm -hmm. see. I like we'll see. I'll be reading that column <laughs> I know when that's you write not it. the answer you want, but that's no. the honest one. A Chevrolet System at Cadillac Prices, good book. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this is a, I hate to say it, a really dull subject. You know what I mean? To bring I off the I didn't page. Write it that way. But you didn't write it in a dull way. Good. This is good. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey Simpson, Chronic Condition. And remember, you can join me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer or catch our conversations on YouTube. There will be many more candid storytelling guests to come. Till then, thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.